It's 20 years since Bob Hawke was Prime Minister and about that long since he split up with his wife Hazel and married his long-time lover Blanche Del Puget. Yet all these years later, the Hawke personal life continues to fascinate the public and inflame family tensions. Earlier this year, Bob Hawke's wife Blanche and daughter Sue Peters Hawke had a physical scrap in a Qantas lounge. Blanche Del Puget had recently released an updated biography of Bob Hawke and Sue Peters Hawke had taken issue with the way her mother Hazel was portrayed in it. Well, Sue Peters Hawke has now released her own book, A Biography of Hazel. Hazel Hawke has advanced dementia and can't speak for herself and so this book is doing it for her. I spoke to Sue Peters Hawke in Sydney. Sue Peters Hawke, welcome to the program. Thanks, Lee. I think the first thing everyone would want me to ask is, how is your mum? Um, I saw her a few days ago and it was a really lovely visit. Uh, my answer to that question always tends to depend a little bit on the last visit, and the last visit was lovely. When she converses now, the language part of her brain is a bit damaged, so a lot of the time it doesn't make sense. And then sometimes there's a very clear sentence, but she's very connective. She's talking to you, and so you talk back with her. So there's that, completely that feeling of being engaged. And does she ever know who you are? No. Although, uh, when she was sick recently, she did seem to know who I was and she kept calling my daughter Sophie. She kept calling Sophie Sue. Um, so there was some sense of connection then because we were around her more intensively for a few days. Um, so, yeah, her dementia is really very advanced. She still walks. She still enjoys walking outside and enjoys the garden and the sun. She used to love playing the piano. Did she do that anymore? Sadly, that's, that seems to have disappeared now, fairly recently. Have you reconciled yourself to that being the way that your mum's life is ending or does it still strike you how unfair it is? It certainly struck me reading the book, it just seems so unfair. Yeah. Look, a lot of people say unfair, it's just never been my take or mum's. I mean, it sort of presumes that it would be fair if it happened to somebody else or something or that the universe is fair and that's just a human invention, the idea of fair. And in human activity, we can strive to be fair, but I don't think the allocation of disease <laughs> Is fair. You write in the book that Hazel was affected by the tendency of men of her era not to see women. Mm. What do you mean by that? It's a pity feminism's become a dirty word because I think there's a lot about it. Really, all it's about is the the idea that men and women should have equal opportunities and uh, chances and esteem and respect in life. And that wasn't the case in the world in which Mum grew up. And so I think I say, say something like the very sort of aspirations and ambitions and qualities that men's sense of themselves was predicated upon relied on those not being there in women, not competing with the desire or the aims of the man. They were very much seen in terms of being you know, lovers, partners, partners in the sense of the domestic partner and the raiser of children and the person who would support the man in his path through life. There was no such thing as considering a woman's path through life other than that in that ancillary role. And you write that this thing is very critical to understanding the nature of your parents' relationship. Mm, I think so. Because I think, you know, retrospectively, um, some people like to look at some of Dad's behaviours and think, oh, wasn't he a bastard? But as I say in the book, most of the stuff he did was absolutely typical of many men of his time and so it would be absurd to condemn him individually for a lot of those things. There might be particular personal things you could get a bit snooty about but it's missing the point, you know. It's to look at it in the context of he was playing out his script and she was playing out her script and there was nothing remarkable about either of them in that sense. A lot of the media commentary in the lead up to this book has pegged it as being payback for the book oh. that Blanche Del Puget wrote about your dad. Is it? No. That's absolutely wrong. It was speculation that somebody started. They were off mark and it's not the case. I honestly don't want to even really go on about that because I think, yeah, that's, it's really just Blanche in good faith has written cert certain things. I don't think there's ever been anything other than good faith to it, but the fact is she never really knew Mum well. So um, she had a perspective that you know, wasn't one that accorded with the Mum I knew or that other people knew. There was reporting that you had an altercation with Blanche at a Qantas <laughs> club yeah. and that police were called. Can you explain to us exactly what happened in that incident? Oh, look, I went to say hello. She had the snits with me. <laughs> she gave me a good one too. I walked away. On the, but on the face or what was the... Yeah, yeah, just right. open hands right. sort of thing. Um, 
I've since found out that she sought to apologise to me later that day, but things had sort of gone haywire. But um, Were the police called? I was very, very shaken, and yes, and I was advised just to make a record of the incident, never with any intent of pursuing it as a legal matter or anything. So that was done, and then the sort of gossip-level press got really intrigued by it. But look, stuff happens in families. You know, you show me a family that hasn't had an argument. Some people have it by not talking to each other, some people have it by having a yell. Sometimes, you know, yeah, I'm not justifying it, but sometimes there's a bit of one too. Um, I don't think it's something you can make into a Crown case, you know. And how's it ended up? Look, Blanche has apologised, we've kissed and made up, and we both feel very good about that. And I think the whole family, in a sense, can relax a little bit. And that side of things is not really anybody else's business anyhow, but, you know. Do you see much of Bob and Blatch? Like, do you, would you say you have a close relationship with them? I have, I've had a very good relationship. There has been this year's interruption, but, you know, we're all very happy. We're having dinner uh, this weekend, I think. The book's certainly not, um, you know, harsh of your dad, but it certainly doesn't gloss over uh, no. some of his uh, life no. either. Um, do you feel, I guess, any anger or resentment towards him over some of those things in his past? Look, that's one of those things. I think now, no, I don't. But I think if something happens that drags me back to the feelings of that time, then I can become aware of the feelings I had then, which were at times, yes, of anger or resentment. And so they are there in the historical mix, and I acknowledge them in the book that at times I had a rather jaundiced perspective. Um, but again, I think both my parents have modelled what I find a really, really admirable approach to relationships, with, which is that neither of them are good at holding grudges, neither of them see a lot of value in holding on to blame and reasons to feel bad about things. Sure, bits of those happen in life naturally, but they've always said, both of them, that you know, bitterness is something that hurts the person who holds it more than the person it's towards. So I suppose I've had positive role models in that sense and I tend to be a bit the same. Is it possible that, because these type of stories tend to get boiled down to cliches, you know, the, mm. the other woman and the wronged wife and whatnot, yeah. is it possible that your mum is portrayed as too saintly? Yeah, I think so. Um, and I say that in the introduction to the book, yeah, that she'd be the first one to say, oh, please, you know. She's too feisty, too fallible, too earthy. There's nothing saintly at all about Mum, nothing at all, whatever a saint actually is. But, you know, she's just... She's a good person, but there's lots of good people, and I think Mum's one of them. Overall, what is it that you'd like Australians to most remember about your Mum? I think... In looking at what was her enduring legacy, somebody said that she appealed to our better judgement, her warm, inclusive, open nature, her willingness to look to the future and see what's the best way of doing things. Life isn't a zero-sum game. What's the win-win approach to how to live with this, how to live well as a community, how to treat each other people, how to, how to treat each other well? You know, that sort of positive, optimistic, inclusive quality and a positive optimism about being able to do things that mean that you get those outcomes. I think that's Mum's enduring legacy and message and one I really would like to see more of in public discourse today. There should be more hazels around. Sue Peters-Hawk, thank you very much. Thank you, Lee.